Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm gonna tell you about some orchids that really don't give me too much joy at the moment. Not that I dislike them, I actually do love most if not all orchids, but it just seems to me that I have to battle all the wrong things to maintain these orchids even alive, let alone thrive. I am struggling to keep them alive. And mainly it does have to do with the environment and where I am at the moment, but I do hope that this video will one, clarify why you might not see some of these all that often in my videos, at least anymore, not like in the past. And two, if you live in similar conditions to me, maybe these are things you should consider. Maybe you already have ideas how to improve these things in your home. I'll tell you why I personally don't improve some of the things anyway. It's a little bit of a different video and it's fun to look back at this video and maybe one day I will actually be able to keep these orchids perfectly and be like, Look at Danny in the past, she was so silly, haha. <laughs> anyway, if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a like and why not subscribe? I do post three times a week, except when I have very busy weeks and at the end of the year, everything kind of just piles up, doesn't it? Anyway, let's start. First off, this is not one of those orchids. I just like to present to you some orchids that I have in bloom at the moment and this is one of them. This is my underdog discovery, the Rubra. Very, very inexpensive orchid. Very inconspicuous, but when she's in bloom, look at her. She's gorgeous. When I put her on the grow shelf, she looks amazing. So yeah, this one is an orchid I do still enjoy to grow very much. These guys though, no, not so much. Now, before you freak out, it's absolutely fine that they are like this, leafless and rootless. These are catasthetum type orchids. They take dormancies during winter. I do have an older video on how to care for these orchids because believe it or not, in my old climate in Romania, I was proficient at growing these. I had no issues growing these orchids. My wine delight was growing like nothing else and blooming every year, no issues. It actually has nothing to do with the climate. These guys, even though they do take dormancies, they don't need a cool winter rest. What really gets me with the catacetums is how much of a pest magnet they are. And I have quite a big pest issue here where I am because right outside the grow room there is a garden. It's not my garden, but there is a garden which has quite a few nice plants, quite a few trees. It's beautiful, but at the same time it attracts a lot of insects and not all of them are good. Stuff like mealybugs, even white fly, I didn't have white fly issues so far. Maybe it's gonna be this year, who knows, because I had everything up until now. Spider mites, thrips, fungus gnats, even though I don't consider them such a big problem. They're all coming from there, and the garden is literally one meter away. Of course, it's much lower down, but one of the tree branches is like one meter away from me, one meter. And whenever I open the window, whatever is in the garden comes here as well. Now, the solution is not to never open the window. I have to ventilate and refresh the air in here. Um, there is no solution at this point. I also have nets, don't worry, but those insects are so, so tiny that really they don't care about my nets. Stuff like mosquitoes and other stuff, yeah, they protect me against that, but thrips, no. <laughs> they just go through anything. Whenever I tried to grow these for the past five years, ever since I moved, and you might see a steady decline in my catacetums over these five years, whenever I tried to grow them, they always got absolutely filled with pests. And the fact that they don't have strong cuticles and strong leaves doesn't help one bit. Their leaves are like paper, are like, I don't know, a salad already made, already dressed for these insects. Because any piss that I've ever had in the grow room zoomed in on the catacetums and completely obliterated the leaves. Problem is, as you can see, these guys become leafless once a year. So once a year, they will depend to photosynthesize and create their own food on the new growth. But oh no, the leaves are just so sensitive, they're also sensitive to my treatments. Combine the two, the very fragile leaves, with the pest issue that I have, and you get a very stressed Danny. <laughs> you might remember in the past I tried to grow them in my D12. There's another issue with these guys. You see how tiny they are? Yeah, they're a little sit back because they kept losing leaves. They should be larger, they should be like this, let's say. And when they have leaves, they're 10 times larger because the leaf span is like this, and they have two leaves one on each side. So it can grow as wide as this and as tall as you don't see it in the frame. They're big guys is what I'm trying to say. 
they don't fit in the detail. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can put them in a different shelf. They will not fit unless I remove one of the shelves. Do I want to remove one of the shelves for them? I might. This year, I don't, because it, it drives me insane. At <laughs> this point, I can't, can't deal with them anymore. But I love them so much. These two are the black ones. This one actually bloomed. I have a video on it. They're just so beautiful. I love catacetums. I've always loved them. The Wine Delight has the most beautiful pharmaceutical <laughs> smell. I don't know. I like it. Um, I love them. It's just so frustrating to grow them here. I had no issue in my previous place because I was living right against a big boulevard with raging traffic all the time on the sixth floor. I had no issues with thrips. Any thrip that would try to survive in that polluted environment would not, would fail at surviving. So I had no issues with pests there. But here, where nature is thriving right outside my door, I have issues because nature also implies pests. <laughs> so. Maybe this issue will get a little bit fixed once we have our own place and move out. I don't know. For now though, it is a struggle. I'm always struggling with them. So yeah, if you want to own these guys, which I think you should, I think you should just give it a try. Beware. They're pissed magnets like nothing else. And that I have to say really puts me down sometimes because I know there's nothing really seriously that I can do at the moment. Nothing that, you know, I would invest energy in. There are many other things that require my energy and I'm much more happy to invest energy on, not these guys. But I'm not giving up just yet. I still have them, as you can see. I just need to come up with this marvelous plan. I don't know what just yet, but we'll see about it this year. Next up, an orchid that I, I don't think I own anymore. I was looking outside to see if I still have anything I'm, I don't think I own. Honestly, I think I kind of like lost everything this summer. Dendrobium nobilis. Oh my goodness. Again, you might know that on my channel you will find a lot of dendrobium nobili footage, especially from the times before the big move to this country. Again, if you're older on my channel, you might know that I had some issues seasoning these orchids. Dendrobium nobili is the type of orchid that does require a very distinct winter. It would appear that it also requires a particular type of length of a winter, which this environment simply cannot provide. And the end of summer is somewhere in, oh, October, November, which means I have a super, super big, super hot season in which a Dendrobium nobili not only grows one growth, but it can grow two, but not really two, two and a half more like, because at some point, midway through the second growth, I experience winter, which is a sort of a mild Romanian autumn here. It's beautiful, but for a Dendrobium nobili, it's a little bit shocking. And it's not actually going to go through its normal process of actually having that rest that it needs because soon enough, it's gonna get warm again. Spring here happens in February, I would say. So you get the summer end somewhere in December, January, let's say, is a sort of a transitional period in which the orchid tries to realize, okay, what's going on? Is it winter? Is it summer? Okay, it's winter. Let's go into winter mode. Although I didn't finish this growth, I'm gonna try to grow it while going into the winter. It's not properly going into its rest. And then boom, in February or March, ta-da, spring again, warm temperatures, time to bloom. Bloom what? I'm not even dormant yet. What am I supposed to do with this weather? That's how the dendrobium nobly freaks out in my conditions. And in the past, yeah, you've seen some blooms, but all of these unseasoned, inadequate bloomings and weird timings took a big toll on these orchids. And these orchids just perished, all of them this year. They just could not handle all of that stress and setback and lack of energy and lack of proper dormancy. And it's, it's sad because one of those orchids is the oldest orchid in my collection. It's more than eight years old in my collection and it just gave up. It completely gave up. So the Dendrobium nobilis, as much as I love them and as sad as it is, I kind of lost all of them. They're just something I don't want to purchase anymore because I will need to properly, artificially maintain their climate proper. And yes, I could. And I always get comments saying like, oh, if you get a fridge, if you get this, if you get that. Yeah, if I get this, if I buy, if I spend money on this, if I spend time and energy, 
I could do that. There are solutions. This is not complaining, but the idea is that sometimes I want to put my money and energy into something else. Uh, stuff just take other priorities. Yesterday, I wanted a big, diverse collection. Tomorrow, I want my own home. So the priority right now is not to maintain it, the Dendrobium nobly alive, but to have my own home. So the nobly can wait. Maybe I'm gonna give it a go in another number of years. They appear in flower shops very often here. They're beautiful, I like them, but the weather and conditions here and climate here is just not what they need. And going back to what I said in the beginning, it just feels like I'm battling all the wrong things other than enjoying discovering the orchid and learning how to care for it. Cause I just have so much of a different environment than what that orchid is acquainted to. So in the end, I'm battling my own environment, not the orchid. The orchid is just confused and trying to make sense of everything and it, it just fails. So yeah, the Drobium nobilis, not a very common occurrence from now on on my channel. I don't know how it's gonna be in the future, but it's just not working out here. Next one, no surprise here. Um, I think I did this a million times. Nelly Eilers and Miltoniopsis. These are some of my favorite orchids, particularly the Nelly Eiler. I just, oh, I go mental when I see it. It is one of those things that I really want and I cannot have, especially in this environment. Now I do have a Miltoniopsis here. It is the only one that I have recently purchased it. It's a species that it's supposed to be a little bit more tolerant to heat. So I'm trying it out. There is a little flower spike that grew ever since I purchased it, slowly developing. So fingers crossed, it's gonna push through and open the flowers. But everything that is a Miltoniopsis or Nelly Eiler is just struggling so, so much in this environment. And to put things into perspective, not only is it hot, but it's hot all the time, day, night, for such a long time, these guys get tired. Yeah, they can absolutely withstand some hot temperatures. And I'm sure many of you have hot summers, but rather milder nights. You get cooled off in the night. You don't get cooled off here. It's still 30 something degrees at night in the summer here as well. And these guys just don't catch a break. And again, I could keep this room cool at night all the time. I could, do I wanna do that? No, I don't wanna waste that much energy, that much electricity, which is not even optimized at this point. It's one of the things we are optimizing uh, in our future home, definitely. But now it costs so much money. It wastes so much electricity. Imagine doubling what I'm using now. No, I refuse. I just refuse. It's not worth it, even though I love these orchids. So that's the problem with the Miltoniopsis and Nelly Eilers. They are rather intermediate, to cool growing. I think these orchids are gonna do great for you if you live in a cooler climate further up in the north or the south, closer to the poles than I am in any case. I think they might be just as easy as any on Sidium for you. But for me, no. And I love them so much. It hurts me so much that I cannot keep one alive. So again, in the future, this might change. I learned never to say never. <laughs> so hopefully in the future, I will do a better job with caring for them. But for now, everything that is a cool grower, and it includes other species like Mastovalias, Draculas, I'm not really heartbroken all that much about them. But these, I did have flourishing, again, in my <laughs> old apartment. And now I can't. Um, so yeah, one day I will have the money and energy to invest in some solutions. It's not only the money, it's also the energy, you know, the availability. I'd rather do something much more helpful for myself and for the people around me with my time and energy than, you know, coming up with solutions for these guys, for now at least. So we'll see in the future, but for now, as much as I love these orchids, I don't enjoy growing them because it's just another disappointment. Anyway, one day, one day. And then there are some miscellaneous species. I'll just mention a few. Um, Angricums, I don't know. They just don't bring me all that much joy anymore. Um, I do have some Angricums. I don't have the Sescipedale. That guy was so prone to crown rot, I lost it. Of course, after a thrips treatment. I do have the Leones. I do have a few others. I'm not sure if it's related to the climate, but again, they don't seem to be the most flourishing type of orchids. The most flourishing ones, I'm gonna show you a few, are the ones that are heat tolerant. Everything else, not so much. And not all Angracums are very heat tolerant as I discovered. So yeah, I do still have the Angracums, but I have to say they don't bring me all that much joy because again, I feel like I'm battling more than just what 
the orchid needs to survive, I'm battling my environment and the pests and all of that. Similarly, uh, what's the name? Sarcochylus. Sarcochylus is an orchid that I really, really want. The flowers are right up my alley. I love the flowers. I might, again, give it another go another day. All the Sarcochylus that I ever had just fizzled out. It just didn't do it for me. I don't know if it's the type that I find in my area. So, I don't know, maybe some of you in Australia, maybe you have some better genetics in your plants. I feel like here in Europe, we don't have many, let's say, variations. I always find the same ones, the same hybrids or species for sale. There are three, only three. So either they're all kind of having or sharing the same problems, either it's my environment. End of story. I love sarcochylus, I just can't grow them and I, I don't understand why. <laughs> So those types that just happen to want very different environments than what I can provide, yeah, I, I don't want to invest all that much time and energy into them anymore and money, of course. I don't want to purchase so many of them anymore because from the beginning, I feel like it's a lost battle for now. We'll see in the future. There are, however, things that just flourish for me and I love these things. Catlia types are one of them. I want to go a little bit more into the miniature Cattleya types if I find them. I know somebody asked me to make some more videos on miniatures and I do want to, but I want to have some more blooms to show you, right? I am starting to actively collect smaller Cattleyas as well. Relax a little bit from battling this climate and just enjoy repotting the orchid, watering and caring for the orchid, making sure I'm doing a proper repot, a good division, a good propagation and just enjoy the bloom when it comes, right? And discovering how many times a year does this orchid bloom? Can it bloom more like the Brassavola? I really do enjoy this aspect that has to do more with the hands-on things, not with the, oh, let's see how we can transform this climate into the freaking North Pole. That's how it feels like. It feels like I'm trying to transform this room into a fridge sometimes. And I don't want to do that anymore. So from now on, I don't know how many videos on those orchids you will see. I will just try to focus on whatever grows. And thankfully, there are many things that grow okay. And I just don't have to declare war on temperature and things of the sorts, you know? Yeah, so let me know in a comment below. Do you have such orchids that simply do not want to cooperate with you, but you would wish they would? Let me know in a comment below because uh, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. We're all in this together. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video and maybe gave you some ideas of what to not spend so much money on, I guess. So with that said, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.